Hi everyone, in this lesson we will be working on graphing compound inequalities. If you're in Ms. Drake and Lynch's class, we are on page 12 in your Unit 3 packet. So try the do now, pause the video, you can check the answer key that we posted in the directions for the lesson, and then we will move on to the notes for compound inequalities. So a compound inequality is two inequalities at the same time joined by either the word end or the word or. Okay, let's talk about the difference between the words and and or. And means both items have to be true at the same time. Sometimes we'll use the word intersection. It's where the two solution sets intersect. If you think about a Venn diagram, if you have your two inequalities here, the intersection is this middle shaded region where both are true at the same time. The word or, sometimes we'll use the word union. That means either one can be true for the whole statement to be true. Determine whether each claim given below is true or false. So let's think about an English sentence first before we start talking about math sentences. Right now, I'm in math class and English class. Is that true or false? You should say false. You're not in both math and English at the same time. For this end statement to be true, both would have to be true. Right now, I'm in math class or English class. Is that true or false? That's true. Only half of the statement had to be true for the whole thing to be true because of the word or. So in a math sentence, like an English sentence, a compound inequality separated by end is true if both are true. A compound sentence separated by or is true if either is true. Let's turn the page. Okay, our first example is a compound inequality. Negative 1 is less than x is less than 3. So this is a compound inequality because we have two inequality symbols at the same time. So my first step, I'm going to separate this into two separate inequalities. So here's my first one. Negative 1 is less than x. So I just took the left-hand side of the inequality and rewrote it. And then I'm going to take this half and rewrite it here. x is less than 3. Okay, so I really have two inequalities separated by the word n. So when you have an x in between two inequality symbols and two numbers, it's really an n statement with the x in between. Now I'm going to take this inequality and rearrange it so that the x is on the left and the number is on the right. Okay, when I switch my number and my variable, I can also switch my inequality sign. So this says negative 1 is less than x, or x is greater than negative 1. And, and I'll leave this one exactly as it is. You don't normally have to separate it to rewrite it. I just am doing that to show you what the graph is going to look like. Okay, so to see the graph, first we'll graph x is less than 3 on the number line. So find the 3 on the number line. Should it be an open circle or a closed circle? Hopefully you said open circle because there's no equal sign here. The less than sign says I should shade everything to the left. I'm going to use a pencil. I'm going to erase it a little bit. So here I'm shading everything to the left. And then I also want to graph x is greater than negative 1 on the number line. So find the negative 1. Should it be an open circle or a closed circle? Open. So here's my open circle. And again, I'm going to use pencil to go all the way to the right. Okay. So now I want to look at where those two shaded regions intersect because the solution is really only where both are true at the same time. So where on this number line do are both inequalities shaded at the same time? Hopefully you're looking here in between the two circles. So when I graph a compound inequality with the word end, I really only want to focus on this space between my two circles. So I wrote in pencil because I'm going to erase these two sides. Okay, so we really only want to shade between the two dots, or between the two circles. Okay, so again, anytime we have an end statement, we want the overlap of the two inequalities, which will end up being between the two circles. So here I have two open circles. You could have two closed circles shaded in between. You could have an open and a closed, a closed and an open, or two opens. But for an end statement, you're always shading in between the two circles. All right, let's take a look at an OR statement. For an OR statement, like we said on the page before, either one can be true. So we're actually going to take both inequalities and just graph them on the same exact number line. Okay, so x is less than negative 4. Find the negative 4. And should I do an open circle or a closed circle? 
there's no equal signs, the negative 4 is not included, I will do an open circle. And then think of your less than sign as an arrow pointing to negative infinity. There's the bell. And shade to the left. Okay, now let's look at this inequality. X is greater than 0. Find the 0 on your number line. Should I do an open circle or a closed circle? Open because there's no equal sign. So open circle at the 0. And then which direction am I shading? To the right. So shade your number line to the right of that circle. Okay. So take a look at your number line. When you had an end statement, you shaded in between the two points. When you have an or statement, a lot of times you're shading to the outside or to the two ends of your number line from your two points. So end is in between, or is out to the side. All right, let's take a look at example number three. Graph the compound inequality 6 is less than m is less than 8. At this time, you should pause the video and try this example on your own, and then you can replay it to check your answers. Okay, when we have a variable in between two inequality symbols, it's like example number one, it's an end statement. So think when you have an end statement, you're really graphing between the two endpoints or the two numbers. We also have the variable written between the two numbers, so that should be your hint that you're shading between the two numbers. So when I create my number line, I need to have the number six and the number eight visible on my number line. So I don't always have to start at zero in the center. I need six on there, so I'm gonna start maybe at four or five on this side. So start at four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. Okay, at the 6, do I want an open circle or a closed circle? Take a look at this symbol, and it will tell you what type of circle you want. An open circle at the 6. Okay, at the 8, take a look at this symbol, and it will tell you if you should have an open circle or a closed circle. An open circle. Okay, because M is written between the two numbers, we want to shade between the two numbers on the number line. There you go. All right, example number four. Which inequality describes the following graph? Okay, it's multiple choice, so we are analyzing this graph right here. Okay. Where do we have shading on the number line? Between the two circles or on the outside? Between. So because we're shading between the two points, we know it's an end statement. So let's go ahead and eliminate this because of the word or, and we'll eliminate choice three because of the or. Okay, so it's going to be one of these end statements. Is it y is greater than negative 3 and y is less than negative 1? Or is it y is greater than or equal to negative 3 and y is less than or equal to neg negative 1? The type of circles will tell you which answer choice to pick. So open circle or closed circle? They're both open circles, which means I don't want equal signs in my inequality symbols. So take a look at choice 2 and 4. Which one would you pick? Hopefully choice two. Okay, turn the page. You have four independent practice problems you're going to try. I'm going to post a picture of the answer key for you to check your work. Once you check your work, if you don't have any questions, you can work on the homework problems on the bottom. And let me know if you have any questions.